When caught, many serial killers try to claim insanity in an attempt at a lesser sentence in court. However, there are a few who truly seem to have extreme mental problems that drive them to kill. One such individual murdered 13 people over a five-month period in Santa Cruz, California during the early 1970s. He believed that the killings would prevent devastating earthquakes. There was no set method of murder, and he used bats, guns, and knives to kill his victims. Nor was there a favored victim type. Men, women, and children all fell prey to this deranged killer. Herbert Mullen, the Earthquake Killer. Herbert William Mullen was born on April 18, 1947 in Salinas, California. His family life was fairly normal and his father was said to be stern but not abusive. When he was five, his family moved to San Francisco and in school, Herbert was known to have friends. While he was at San Lorenzo High School, he was also even voted most likely to succeed. However, while he was still in school, Mullen began to suffer from mental problems. He would later be diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and soon after graduation, this was made worse by the death of a close friend named Dean Richardson. Mullen became obsessed with the concept of reincarnation and also began building shrines to his dead friend. In 1969, Herbert was sent to the Mendocino State Hospital, which would be the first of many psychiatric stays. But each time he was released after a brief visit. His schizophrenia was exacerbated by drug use, which included marijuana and LSD. During this time, he also trained for a brief time as a boxer, but was too uncontrollable to be allowed to continue at the gym. In 1972, Mullen moved back in with his parents, who were now staying in Felton, California, near Santa Cruz. His mental state was in shambles, and when he learned that his birthday was on the same day that the 1906 San Francisco earthquake occurred, he fixated on the subject. Somehow he came to the conclusion that the only way to prevent future earthquakes was a blood sacrifice. In his mind, the only reason that there had not already been one was the deaths that occurred during the Vietnam War. But by this time, the U.S. involvement in the conflict had slowed down and he decided that he must do something to prevent a catastrophe. The first murder occurred on October 13, 1972. Herbert pulled his car to the side of the road in the Santa Cruz Mountains and popped the hood. He had seen a homeless man walking and knew that he would soon pass by. 55-year-old Lawrence White came upon the vehicle soon after. He offered to try to fix the car in exchange for a ride. Herbert later said that the man had telepathically asked to be murdered. While he was looking at the engine, Mullen slid a baseball bat out of his car. He crept up behind Lawrence and struck him in the head. Once the man was dead, Herbert dragged him off the road and into the woods where he would be found the next day. Eleven days later, Mullen would kill again. He believed that his father had been encouraging him telepathically to murder in order to save lives. On October 24th, he picked up 24-year-old Mary Margaret Kilfoyle as she was hitchhiking to a job interview. As they drove, he stabbed her in the chest. Mullen took the body out of sight and began dissecting her. He said he did this to see the effects of pollution and laid her insides draped on branches to get a better look. She would remain there until she was discovered in February of 1973. On November 2nd, Herbert went to a priest named Father Henri Tomé in Los Gatos to see if he could get confirmation of his beliefs. Instead, he once again received a telepathic message. This time, the priest was volunteering to be the next victim. Mullen kicked in the door to the confessional and stabbed Tomé to death, then took his rosary before fleeing the scene. Two months later, in January of 1973, Herbert drove to find a former classmate named James Gianera, who had been the first to give him marijuana. He stopped at the former address which was near the mystery spot and which now was occupied by 29-year-old Kathy Francis and her two boys, 9-year-old David and 4-year-old Damon. Francis gave him directions and he believes that she also volunteered herself and her kids to be his next sacrifice. He then proceeded to James Gianero's home and shot him and his wife Joan. When he was done, Mullen went back to the Francis home and shot all three occupants, then stabbed them in an act of overkill. Police initially suspected that the murders were drug-related and did not yet connect them to Mullen's previous killings. 
On February 10, 1973, the killer was hiking in the Henry Cowell Redwood State Park. He came across four teenagers camping. Brian Scott Card was 19, David Olicker and Robert Spector were 18, and Mark Drybelbus was 15 when they crossed paths with Mullen. The boys' campsite was illegal and he told them that he was a park ranger and that they had to leave because they were polluting the forest. When they refused, he left, but returned the next day armed with a 22 caliber pistol and shot each of them in the head. After killing them, he ransacked their belongings and took a 22 rifle that they had brought with them. The final murder occurred on February 13th of 1973. Herbert Mullen had been driving through Santa Cruz when he saw 72-year-old Fred Perez working in his front yard. Herbert turned around and stopped outside the house and used the stolen rifle to shoot Perez dead. Luckily, a neighbor was able to write down Mullen's license plate number and he was soon arrested. Police found the pistol that he had used in prior murders as well as the rifle he had just used to shoot Perez. While in police custody, Mullen readily confessed his crimes. The only question remaining to the court was whether or not the killer was sane. The fact that he had planned the attacks and made an effort to conceal his crimes convinced the jury that he was, and on August 19, 1973, he was convicted of the murders in Santa Cruz, and soon he was also convicted in a Santa Clara court. Herbert Mullen was sentenced to life in prison at the age of 26. While behind bars, he met another Santa Cruz serial killer, Edmund Kemper, though the pair did not get along. Kemper would say in an interview that he did not believe the claims about earthquakes and insanity, and also that Mullen was in a lot of psychological pain. On August 18th of 2022, Herbert Mullen died of natural causes in the California Healthcare Facility in Stockton.